Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. Coming in first, bad boy, James J. O. Oh. Co-host one, Rock General Calico Yachts. Coleco Yates! That's how it sounds in New Japan style. What's up, what's up, everybody? How y'all doing, man? Go host two. Machine gun. Nick Mayhem! Hey, what's up, James? What's up, what's up, everybody? I feel like I should be running out of a tunnel today. Dun, 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 song. <laughs> and this is Wrestling Whip. Entertainment. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna get heat for doing that. <laughs> Why? I love it though. I love it. <laughs> Why would you get heat for doing that? I know. I know. That's cool. But you know, that. politically correct people. Ah, uh, screw them. Yeah, fuck them. Okay. If if uh, you want to, be, you know, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Two shoes in a bucket. And uh, hey. We have a fork today, coming from the remix, Scooter Dust. How are you, Scooter? I am good. I am glad to be here, uh, representing the remix with uh, with all you fine uh, gentlemen and uh, wrestling fans. And always just remember, I'm Scooter Dust, and I'm better than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you let me know it every fucking day. <laughs> but in your case, it's true, Mitch. Let, let's yeah, just be fuck honest. off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to dispute that with Scooter. Uh, for mm-hmm. those who don't know, Scooter is my good friend. We go back, so unfortunately for him. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't push him back enough. Yeah, <laughs> too much. I'm a resilient motherfucker. Hey, there you go. And uh, Mitch, I have came to a revelation. Uh, this week, I. What's that, my friend? I know why you were uh shitting all over Ghetto last week. It's because your boy is Rocky Romero. He trained you, and you're helping him get that <laughs> office job. Good um, connection. Good job. Yeah. For people that don't know, Rocky actually trained Mitch. Yeah. He'll deny that till he's dead. But it actually oh, I'm not gonna deny it. I, I'm proud of that. Rocky Romero was no, Rocky no, Romero, Rocky, Michael Myers. Rocky, Rocky will deny it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rocky won't deny it. Rocky but, be yeah. like, who? Like, what? Like, ha ha ha. Oh my god. It was a while back, but yeah. Yeah. Let's. Uh, with that being said, and. Let's try not and talk about Joey Ryan's dick or uh, fans' red asses this week. <laughs> hey, um, man, that wasn't the news, bro. I'm just covering the news. Yeah. Joey yeah. Ryan's the one who put his dick up for sale to touch it for $30 at WrestleMania weekend. And there uh, was not me. They're paying for it, so hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is not on any of us. We, we just report the facts, fam. Just reporting the facts. <laughs> exactly. I suppose, but we really need to get off Joey Ryan. <laughs> uh, literally or figuratively. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a <laughs> Sorry. Boat. I, okay. All right, let's, let's start. We're wrestling with a moment of mayhem. Yeah. All right, jumping right into it. Thank you, James. All right, starting off first, we got a few a few news noteworthy news items that most most people will probably know nothing uh, from my sources or anything like that. So, Malenko quits WWE. Uh, Dean Malenko, who's been over eight years uh, in the company at least, uh, has finally yeah left. And uh, whoever I don't know what Dean's going to be up to. I just heard this today. Uh, but I wish the best to him. Man, that's fucked up. I, I, I was a Dean Malenko fan, man. That oh, dude, like, that receding hairline was like something he did. To <laughs> but, like, he was like, man, that dude was the shit to me. The man of a thousand old, yeah, goddamn, overly. I mean, 
the, the guy was the cult of no personality. <laughs> <laughs> He, like, was, was, he was a wrestling purist, for sure. He was a wrestling purist's wet dream. Yeah. yeah but he, did, but he, he, did, he was a cardboard personality. I will get you to that. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, but he was a good it. backstage, too. He, you, but, know, you don't have to stay eight years in the backstage and not be good at your job. Oh, well, he, like I said, he, yeah, he was, the, in my opinion, like one of the kings of the ring in terms of mat technicians. But he also he played as a good foil for someone like Jericho, to like play off of his serious attitude, like that Jericho Dean Malenko feud, I still remember that. Okay, that was a and great and my w- only WCW. Feud. About WCW is that feud? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no, maybe you, no. but I I grew up during that era, so yeah, I remember man, a lot. Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Rey Mysterio. That dude, like, has mm-hmm. yeah, some bangers, yeah. man. It's yep. interesting, you know, how the wrestling world is changing, and you know, um. Somebody got fired recently, Arn Anderson, uh, and now Dean Malenko. So it's just interesting as to things are changing backstage. Well, the inners. well, Dean didn't get fired, though. He quit. And yeah, you're right. Things are changing. People are leaving left and right because WWE was the monopoly, and now there's a number two coming in that's making them have to do this shit and pay double like they are having to pay double the contract uh, amount and stuff like that, making the wrestling economy better. If anything, like I said, that's why I'm glad AEW's in, throwing their hat in the ring. So. A hopeful number two, for the record. A hopeful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, a TNT or TBS? Yeah, TNT or TBS, but... It, well, it, when, I, when I talked to Scott, he was like, no, they're going to be on access. <laughs> um... Nah, because New Japan's access. Mark Cuban. Right. Mark Cuban ain't gonna... Scott, what are you saying, bud? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm betting the TNT TBS stuff is misdirection. Okay, okay, really? that's fine. But I have, I have it under good authority. So, okay. Uh, Turner is one of the companies, the one of the two, in control in uh, bidding for AEW. <laughs> Well, well, they got they have to do is uh, right because they got to pull up there because now is like where all the TV companies are putting out their fall lineups, right? Like to get exactly. And I reported last week on the Mayhem Minute that uh, AEW would be presented in uh, Warner, basically Turner, the, the Turner Company uh, cable company's fall lineup, and it, but under terms that that um, like. Depending on how many big names they get, how big their roster is, will define if they go to TBS or TNT, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. So, right. What's your next and how, how how double or nothing goes, how fight for the fallen goes, which are all before October. So. Yeah. What's your next piece of news, Mitch? Okay, moving on to the second. Uh, Luke Harper and Sasha Banks are basically going to be Neville, as they wanted their releases, but are being told to sit home and wait out the contracts if they want. But here's the catch-22. If they do that, WWE can just freeze their contracts, and then they have to rework that time, and so they would never be free. It's a convoluted bullshit situation, but I think something will be worked out. In this day and age, it's just not in WWE's interest to hold people against their will. I, I don't think that's the. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is that they went public about it because yeah. If you look, if yeah, you look at, if you look at how Goldust did it, like he didn't really yeah. say anything, and he just asked for his release and they granted Cause, it. Because he was kayfabing for his brother for for AEW. He wanted a big no, no, shocking surprise and that no, announcement. But, but not even that. Like just the fact that well, like, yeah. he, didn't, he didn't come out with an Instagram that's post a about part of it. Hey, I want to leave and I'm unhappy. Okay, well, because I because. That's, Chris Ronald is old school. He likes kayfabe, kayfabe style where everyone's not a smart mark back. But not even that. That's just a so good that's why tactic. he was serving us. But that's exactly. not even, that's just a good business tactic. Like, don't say nothing until like they Biden. actually give you what you want. Like everyone's putting the cart before the horse, thinking, "Oh yeah." Like, here's what I think they were trying to do. They were trying to push it on social media so that way they think the social media would give them the leverage. To right. force WWE to play their hand, 
But right, but then the, I see what you're doing. Sorry, yeah, go but but like gold dust like shut the fuck up and not really like making any waves. He got his shit just like that, and now he's going to AW. Like they don't really care. It's just it's yeah. just basically how you handle business. I agree with Coleco. Oh, like just if you're gonna complain and bitch and moan, I, I want to be, I want to leave. WWE is not gonna do that. But if you keep your mouth shut, wait out your time, and you know keep it inside the right. company and not publicly uh, say it, they are more likely to give you what you want. Right, because you gotta you look at what? it like WWE is a publicly traded company. So this is where. That shit gets to stockholders. That shit gets to shareholders, and they're gonna be looking like, "What the fuck? What's going on? Is there a HR issue? Is there this issue? Is that issue?" And that's where stock goes down, and that fucks with WWE's bottom line. So that's like, it's a big, it's a bigger connect than yeah. just, "Oh, let me give you my release." No, right, you're right, and that definitely has a huge part to play in it. And I'll give you, like, I'll uh, throw an example at your way of what you're talking about. The revival. They didn't throw it out there. It was rumored, but they handled it backstage and they dealt with it. But the so yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I hope that so, they uh, they fix things with Luke Harper because he's just an incredible talent. And yeah, we went over this last week. Yeah. Yeah, and just for McMahon to see such a big guy that can walk like nobody's business. That's in McMahon's best interest to keep him around. And oh, I McMahon think judges well. I, and Luke Harper is one of the most liked people backstage. Yeah, but go ahead, yeah. That, yeah, he is. And I, the, yeah, they had him like Mr. Irrelevant or Mr. Underrated or something like that. Like, to, yeah, it's crazy. But to, I mean, to, uh, to quote Luke Harper, I'm a team player. <laughs> <laughs> so, but and, I think I think that'll give them enough time for. But by he's freezing a star. The con- he needs to, yeah. The but I think by freezing the contract, that, making it work, he'll be okay. The he'll ironic okay. part is that, you know, uh, Luke Harper's really like backstage. I think it's the exact opposite with Sasa Banks. I think she's pretty hated backstage. Right. She's a bitch. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> she's a bitch. I mean, her personality is not. She think, she's a princess. She's a princess. She thinks she can get what she wants anytime she wants to. She cries enough. Her personality is not the great, but I don't fault her because you see what Charlotte, all the opportunities Charlotte gets, you see all the opportunities Alexa Bliss gets. Well, and, well, and I, I think he and and Sasha has not been like nay like her title reigns are at best like two weeks, right? Like, yeah, I get it. Like they they don't they don't give her. Like, they give her the ball, and then they'll be like, okay, let's take the ball. It's like Charlie Brown, right? Like, you go kick the ball, and then you kick the ball, and the motherfucker pull the ball away from your ass. You'll be pissed well, enough. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you to a certain extent, but you got to be a professional. Everyone's a professional. you got to, <laughs> like, work within the confinements of the, of the law, so to speak. And with Sasha, I feel like she had a silver spoon born in her mouth with her family, Snoop Dogg being her cousin. She's kind of given whatever she, you know, given what she needed or what she wanted. And <laughs> I, so, so she grew up that way, and I feel like she's got that snobby, like, princess but, attitude. But she's from Boston. He from L.A. It ain't like it, they were, like, going okay. down the street and having so, sleepovers. But here's the thing. Why, <laughs> why don't they just, like, fuck up your fucking damn self, a heel-ass bitch, and that will fucking uh, get back over because that's what she was in NXT. But I think that's what they want to do. I, I don't think so. Really, no, no, no. That's what they're saying. They're saying if she comes back, she'll be the Miss Money of the Bank. And we'll if they go turn her heel and go back to bitch boss, yeah. screw them. They're dumb. Like that's, but, but, that's money, man. That, that is money. But, Sasha Banks. That's the Sasha Banks I liked in NXT. Yeah, because but, that's the because that's the real Sasha Banks, and it shows. But, that's I But my thing is, is that. That you got a person where no it's matter, true, but yeah, but you got a person who's a double champion, and no matter who they go against, is going to be a heel. So it really doesn't matter, right? Whether right. she becomes a face or heel. I understand, but people like when people finally like accepted who they were and ran with it, like Charlotte Flair being Rick's daughter, and people like that. When they just go with it and make it work for them, then 
things, you know, they, they work out, as you can see with those people. But if you fight it, I mean, uh, yeah. So Sasha had a gr- I, I, I think I think she maybe wanted to go heal, too. That's why I think, thought, like, part of the fuss was. But I also know uh, she wanted the tag, the tag thing with her and Bailey was a big deal. And then yeah, it split up, really pissed both of them off. But yeah, yeah, Bailey but- handled it more professionally. Yeah, but think about it. If you were told, yo, we go bring these titles, we want you to get these titles, we I, want you to establish these titles, and then uh, right. two months later, they're like, yo, we're you going to give these titles to somebody else? And then, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to break you up. And then I, all the you know I'm saying? like, I, I'm not saying that she's right in how she handled it, but the right. way WWE compounded the news to her, I'll agree with you, absolutely. Yeah, but but, but just look, look at it this way. But but yeah. everyone else handles it. You yeah. know, they got about it, and then when your time comes to renegotiate, you can play your hand. Well, look at it this way: Bailey shut her mouth, and she got a match with Charlotte Flip. Didn't win. Like, what's that going to do? Yeah. <laughs> but but she's getting she's getting opportunity. Well. Maybe Sasha could have had that opportunity as well. Uh, I really don't think they're gonna do much with Bailey. They man, really, they missed the, they missed the boat on Bailey. So they bad. threw her into the damn. Me and Kalika went over this. They could have made Bailey the female John Cena. They really could have. That lady, that bitch could have been the female John Cena. Like damn, yeah, I know. that's what I just said. <laughs> that I bitch could have been. Like, if I if it was available that, to me, I would have bought a hugger T-shirt. <laughs> I'm just saying that bit, and and when I say bitch, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. bitch is it. I know, I, right? Term of yeah. it for the audience, but that <laughs> could have been goddamn money for WWE. It would have been tenfold. Like yeah. it just made no sense, and they could have put in a whole swath of young women who were yes. looking yeah. up, like people like that. Like right, that could have been like six, seven year old money right there. Let, let, they, like I told you uh, last week when we had this discussion, uh, Coleco, that you know, Izzy, there could have been millions of Izzy's all around the world. Exactly. Just like that. You're right. I, mean, I agree with you tenfold, bro. And if they had to just took that relationship and put it to, to, to the main roster, oh my God. I, I agree. He would have been in a different light. Right. <laughs> What's your name? Can you hear me, Mitch? Can you hear me, Mitch? Oh, Hello? Yeah. Yeah. You're alive. Oh, shit. I thought you died. What happened? I'm letting you guys talk about it. What's up, man? Get in this shit. I ain't even going to like you. Phone's freezing. Somebody's got to be in a buffer, yo, because, I mean, it's a consensus, but. It was my phone, sorry. But to me, it's like. Bailey could have been a lot, a way bigger star than what Charlotte uh, or uh, right, 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 right. Oh, go ahead, Charlie Scott. Like, I, mean, I, I honestly, I don't think Bailey could have. Uh, you know, dude, they, with what they had though, the, the, the Izzy thing, they had millions of girls. She was the new John Cena if they rolled with the NXT style Bailey. That was just was the fact. Yeah, if they had her just like stuff, I thought, bro. I I saw it in my head of how to roll her in the WWE, bro, and I was like, "What the fuck are they doing? They yeah. are ju- they're throwing millions of dollars away in the gutter." That's what I said to myself when I saw it. I had a really good storyline with uh, Billy and Izzy, but like that's so far, we're so far past that at this point. Uh, but uh, let's get on, on to the next piece of news. Yeah. Okay. Third in line. Uh, the, I okay. I want to put in. I want to put in parentheses. I have not been able to confirm this, so I don't. I don't want to say it and say without saying I, I. I can't confirm this. But the rumors online are Joey Ryan uh, supposedly turned down a offer from WWE to go to NXT and then be a trainer afterwards, Next. and it would have been a pay cut. Next piece of news. <laughs> you don't yeah. like Joey Ryan, do you? <laughs> No, yeah, I heard that. Move on. He's killing the yeah, business. I heard that. No, he's not. He's making money, yo. Like, that dude is... Thank you, Coleco. Thank like, you, Coleco. He's making... Thank you. Thank you. Like, that, like that, 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 that dude that is, dude like, is making like, making so, so, much, so much money. Just with, like, the bar Just wrestling like that the they do in LA. 
Oh my god, yep. like that dude is making money and he's doing yep. how to do it. He's he's like Santino, except a porno Santino. I better he's a way better wrestler, bro. I think you guys were just high on Joey Ryan. I'm not high No, he's a good character wrestler. No no no, he's a good wrestler. I'm high on his hustle because that me too. Dude, me like, too. Like he literally like he That's made what I'm a off his, and, off his bit to buy his own house outright. Like, and let's be honest, down. he knew right. that that thing, he knew it was mainly women, and if it was some dudes, I'm sure he was like, no to some people. I mean, I would hope so, at least. <laughs> All I say is that he could sell Eskimo to, uh, ice to an Eskimo, so... that That's the wrestling business, baby! That yeah. means you're a star if you can do that, bro. Yeah, if you could get marks to, like, you know... So, Joey yeah, Ryan is a star. Down. He might use his penis for gimmicks, but he's a star. Uh, next piece of news And plus, he also does... <laughs> next. next. Okay. He does matches, man. He also does the intergender matches where, like, he's not ashamed <laughs> of, like, letting these over, getting their shine. I'm telling you, man, that dude, he's tapping into a market that actually is well in Japan. I swear to God, it does. Yeah, like, it yeah, you're right. Blood. No, you're right. Surprisingly, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now uh, on to the fourth and final bit of news uh, for now. Yeah, because it's been one hell of a moment, hasn't it? Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> Andrade uh, Almas is... Oh, basically, the, um, the brand... Basically, brand switch, LOL, right? What happened? Uh, no brand switch. It all basically went... Clusterfuck with yeah. Cesaro and so many others going, yeah, back and forth. But Andrade came out on Raw, and it was supposed supposed that uh, Alistair Black was going to be on Raw. And then all of a sudden, Andrade shows up on SmackDown because they're trying to keep they're trying to keep the uh, couples together with Andrade and Charlotte. That's not what I thought. Uh, and Zelina Vega. I, I hate hey, something. Charlotte want that dick. Straight up. And, but there's more to it. There's, there's more to it. There's more to it. Uh, yeah, no. She uh, want to do that. Oh, that's it. Oh, eat it all. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one last ca caveat to that is that Fox requested and brought in Delina Vega because of the lack of uh, Latino or Spanish speaking stars on their program. Yeah, that's and what I heard. So, for, for <laughs> their uh, Spanish speaking channel, Fox Deportes. Fox yeah. Deportes! Hey. Yep. You know what's funny, funny shit? I remember I went to Royal Rumble and I saw them together and I didn't think, think nothing of it. I was looking like, who the fuck Oh shit, that's Andrade. Oh, he got him a, a, oh, he got him a white chick. I was like, oh shit, that's Charlotte. All right. <laughs> Hey, fuck it. Good. Fox deported. Good for them. Go up and get deported. <laughs> Fox deported. <laughs> yeah, especially in this climate with Trump. That's uh, how we... Oh, God. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. I'm surprised that's not... The, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> and, then, and then they brought Selena back to SmackDown, so they put Alistair with her. Yeah. They're married, so... Yeah, it it makes sense. Like you don't want to fuck up a marriage, man. Like if if what? if you you gotta give Vince that much. He's not in the fucking up like couples and marriage. Uh, bro, they're just learning like, from their mistakes because they did it so many times in the past. Hey, better to learn now than never, man. Yes, but I'm just saying when you said Vince wasn't in the uh, screwed up relationships, he's done it many times. I mean, he screwed his own relationship, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> But, but he, he, I mean, like, yes, they at least learn with the times. I, I will give them that. That would, that would be stupid to be stubborn and just fight against it, against the progression. Get back to SmackDown. <laughs> you're fired. Yeah, that sounds like Papa Smurf, Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad that's not a bad though that's, that's better than mine you're fired yeah well yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got the gravelly voice it's okay I'm the singer go what uh, uh, I'm gonna point at the side 
Bow right. down to the. No, okay, sorry. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, and that's your ma- moment of mayhem brought to you by uh, retardism. <laughs> Dude. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> great segment that, was, that lasted way too long, Mitch. <laughs> It was literally four new segments. Your guys' banner in between is what made it that long. So that's up hey, to you, brother. But that's what we're like, about. Exactly. So why is but, he getting on to me about it? And he, and, and he didn't even bring up the NXT ref that broke his leg the other night. Yeah. Oh, no, I couldn't oh, do it all. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, let's bring that up. Go ahead. Say that, Cleco. Like, that bro got dedication to break his leg and count that three. Because I would be counting shit. I do. That's a real... That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what wrestlers do, bro. That, like, it, when you have that adrenaline going, it's like a painkiller. It, 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 like, clears everything out of the way. And then you feel it when you get backstage. But that's but, uh, a referee. Yeah. He's not taking bumps the whole long uh, but, but, but he's no, but it's the same. It's the same because he's out in front of the crowd. It's the same rush. It was he clearly pissed Tom he, Castro. It's performing. It's performing. Sure. Uh, he broke it during a match between uh, Tyler Breeze and Velveteen Dream. And he went on, he went on with it. Uh, uh, to capitalize on what uh, Mitch's uh, first piece of news, Dean Malenko has just been announced for StarCast. I knew it! I didn't want <laughs> Because I can confirm it about the AEW and StarCast. But I knew that's, it, but, so, uh, that's come right. on. That's Conrad's hustle. That's obvious. That, that's Conrad's yeah, because, they're, because they're bringing all the WCW old guys on. Dean Malenko, yeah, all those guys back. G, Jim Ross. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they could. They could do and that. that's like, smart. And dude, I that's what I'm saying. TNT, there's a huge history between those guys and TNT, man. I'm just saying. Well, and I, I just you think TNT, it's not. Longer. I think that's just more Conrad's hustle. Because Conrad, well, man, that dude. Well, right, right, right. No, Conrad's the fucking. Conrad's the, the pimp. He's the one who got me into podcasting. Yeah. They, into they, were, looking for, they were looking for someone to uh, replace Terry Funk. Oh, Terry Funk just pulled out, pulled out of podcast, uh, because right. of the unfortunate death hey. of his wife. Oh, oh, no. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. I uh, his no. I met his wife. Oh, fuck. I just didn't hear about that. That's horrible. He's, no, uh, I, I, yeah, I've, 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 uh, I, I've yeah. been on a show with Terry Funk. So, um, fuck. Ron Rank confirmed it on Twitter himself. Uh, Funk is, is, it's a little too soon for him. He's rest in peace. Morning, period. Oh, man. Rest in, I'm so, oh, man. My, my thoughts and prayers go out to Terry Funk and the entire family. Yeah, condolences yeah, to the family. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Man, that, that, that's a bummer. That that pulled me down, bro. Wow. Yeah. Damn, that sucks. But that, condol- I didn't know about I mean, that. We can, we can I, talk about Brock Lesnar talking about the story about when Big Joe pooped on him. <laughs> <laughs> but I think... I think, oh. I think uh, oh, man. Uh, there was just too much... I knew we were going to have intervention, like you guys talk in between my, yeah. the uh, moment of mayhem. So... I knew I was only going to have like four or five segments to do because otherwise we'd be doing it all night. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pod- yeah. Podcasters in Africa don't get one segment, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, you look like you got that, I'm Mitch. a privilege. I, my, me and my white privilege. How do I? I know, right? <laughs> but it, that'd be a ma- <laughs> Okay. Time to drop this up. We're wrestling with Monday Night Raw. <laughs> <laughs> the first match uh, was a triple threat match between AJ Styles defeated Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe in 17 minutes and 47 seconds. AJ Styles Another... caught Mysterio off the top rope and power bombed him into Joe, then gave a Styles cross onto Joe, where Styles then pinned Joe. This was actually a really good match. Uh, yeah, but it was a it was a copy alt paste on from SmackDown to Raw. What do you mean? I mean, what do you expect? expect? They all smack. Smack. I'm just saying, mix up the matchups. They had how many times has Joe and AJ fought just this year alone? Oh, that's that's true. You gotta mix it up if you're gonna send them all to a different brand. Come on. Yeah, that's but, true, but 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 at this point, 
<laughs> no, of course it was a good match. If you put AJ Styles and Joe or Ray in a ring, you're gonna get a good match, bro. So yeah, it's a, it was a great match. Keep in mind, Mysterio is 44. <laughs> he, I, he, the fountain, dude. Ray, Ray's one of my idols, bro. I, Ray's awesome. I can't I wait till like he when he started killing people in the ring. Yes, he he uh, one of the no, one, dude. Oh, what? Go ahead. Oh, uh, that, that that incident in Mexico. Oh, uh, uh, where he accidentally killed. Yeah. Oh, Pero Aguayo? Was it Pero yeah. Aguayo? Yeah. Yeah, it was Aguayo. Yeah. He's a mortal. That was horrible, dude. Oh, oh, I was at WrestleMania weekend at thirty-one when I heard about that. That was weird, yeah. yeah that was, was that around that weekend? I don't remember. It happened during that weekend, yes. Okay. Yeah. It happened during that weekend. Yeah. Uh, next yeah. match on Raw? The next match? Student! <laughs> 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 ah! The teacher has become, yeah, the student. Uh, oh, the student has become the teacher. Match. I fucked that up, bro. <laughs> uh, the second triple threat match was Ben Corbin defeating The Miz and Drew McIntyre. McIntyre nailed Miz with a Claiborne kick, then Corbin tossed McIntyre out of the ring and for the pinfall. Yeah, I mean, they're just the first one not as good. But that lets you know that they still like Corbin because, Cor like, McIntyre easily could have been the guy to get the pen. I, so, I mean, I mean, with AJ. I mean, the whole idea but, behind the champion is the he the heel has the championship, the face chases it, or it's the other way around. Uh, I mean, going with a uh, and moving. Uh, Going, going with Styles, Corbin. Okay, that that that's like a given because you know Corbin isn't gonna get a title shot on a pay per view. On you know. Well, Vince, Vince, they liked him, dude. They like Baron for some reason. Yeah, they uh, like Baron. So I was God. I was scared that the, because of the heel face, uh, you know, situation. You know. But but that just gives also it gives Corbin like to capitalize off that retiring of Kurt Angle like it. That... But Corbin like you know oh. he's not a small guy. Like you would think. That yeah, he's would, a big ass guy. Yeah, you would think that they would uh, place him like in a dominant role, like dominating over little old guys. But he he plays the chicken shit, and I mean like that's how we see him anyway. Hey, but that's how WWE is viewing him as well. But that's right. not how he was booked in NXT initially, though. Right, like, he was the lone wolf with a horrible started, receding hairline. When he first started, he was like kind of like a, a a baby Goldberg at best, like a poor man's Goldberg. Yeah. And I didn't mean the Goldberg, but okay. No, 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 no I'm saying a poor man's Goldberg. Poor. Right, Goldberg. That's still that. Uh, yeah. I, I, okay. How about a uh, maybe a no, a, no, no, a, rich man's, just, a rich man's Goldberg. It, no, because his because his matches were like, pretty much that. <laughs> match. so, like, I'm that's the way that they yeah, were. But but now it's like he was able to get probably more comfortable on the mic, and now he's at that point where he can actually kind of antagonize the crowd, which is what you want. I, I mean, he has done his job in terms of become hated. That's his job to be hated. He, he's done it well. So I mean, we hate him, and but he, he's uh, not gaining anything from it. Like, you know, you have other heels will be it to death, things to death, and like really get that heat on him, on themselves. But I don't see like Baron gets that heat. I think that the people just. No, 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 fuck you, he. progresses beyond that point to really, but, really hot. But the or problem. Really, really cold. I, I, There's a difference I between that, Boo and but fuck I, you, he. Yes, but I think the thing, but I think the thing with Baron is, is that he's able to retain that heat even though he loses, right? Like, but there, it's in a team a, fashion, there, like going out to things that are obvious, like the home yeah, sports team. Yeah, yeah. There's an art to that, right? Like to be able to lose constantly, and you know you're gonna lose, and you, and the audience knows that he's gonna lose. But to even come back every week and be able to still get the audience to hate you that. Right, like well, they care about you when they hate you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and with the Kurt Angle thing, that's even more of a heat because 
<laughs> one, he didn't want him in the match in the first place. And then, secondly, he beats him? Like, come on, bro. Like, you can't get more heat than that if you try. What about you, Shiro? What are your thoughts on the on Baron Corbin? I mean, quite honestly, I don't like Baron Corbin. Never have, never will. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baron Corbin is is dry. He, he's, and he's stale. He Everything, you know, there are times when you know somebody can be a natural heel and can be a natural face, mm-hmm. you know. And this is this is going back to you know the Attitude Era when fans right. got smart to everything. And honestly, you know, Baron Corbin <coughs> gets 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 little reaction, and he has to resort to cheap pops. You know, the thing exactly. on Monday night about him calling himself Iowa's favorite son. Okay. That's what I was saying about the cheap pops. He just go. it's not like, it's fuck you heat. It's like, I hate you. I don't want to see you. Get off my TV heat. But, yeah. but if they let him talk. Oh, wait, wait. Let let's let's go finish. Yeah. It's, it's X-Pac heat. Yeah, there you go. X-Pac. He, my bad, my bad. Well, that's fuck has become a guy. He, now he's reformed. If you, if you yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but I, now I guarantee if Xbox came back, he'd get it like a welcome back chant. And hey, you know what? I would call it Enzo Heat now. Well, <laughs> Xbox Heat is that well, you just don't go away and you just continuously just do your job. Yeah, yeah, it should be yeah, should be action. Yeah. It should be called Enzo Heat, though, for the <laughs> current era. Nah, I, I think that's I mean, maybe, kind of heat. <laughs> I mean, but I think maybe, like, if they if they let him stunt like how he stunts on Twitter and Instagram, it'd be a whole different story. Because that dude, yeah. be, he'd be clapping back. He'd be mm-hmm. clapping. Far. I, mean, I I don't think Baron Corbin is uh, an asshole outside of the ring. I, uh, oh like, no, but you haven't uh, seen him. Well, I've heard that he is. So, <laughs> but. I mean, he used to be. He's getting nicer. I I think, like, them pushing him, I think they were like, you need to be more cordial with the WWE universe. I mean, remember, this is the guy that told Bobby Roode to go back to Ring of Honor. Right! Right! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yep. Oh, wait, exactly. Uh, we, uh, uh, okay. we, can, we can transition from there into uh, the, the next Bobby Roode. <laughs> oh, that poor mustache! He's basically Rick Roode incarnated. Yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. The okay. Sami Zayn promo. I, I, I was gonna say oh, the, the Sami Zayn promo. I love Sami Zayn. I love Sami. That's too. all I'll say. But, I love it, it dude. Hey, he's over exaggerated dancing to mock everyone. I I yeah. just love everything he does. He's My awesome. Only issue with this uh, this promo, yeah, I don't mind him like that. That's about in the fans, and obviously the fans still love him anyway. Um, but when you say I don't want to be in WWE, then why the fuck did you come to work today? Why don't you bro, just leave? It's That's part of the crazy. job. That's what a heel does, bro. You know, come on, you gotta know that. It's working I mean, the crowd. But, they, it's crowd work. But they're trying to tap in to exact the, yeah the uh, the um the reality of things the pi- the, the pipe bomb, if you will, the CM yeah bomb. like exactly. Heat. But if reality, if reality, they, basically. Coming to work and you right. like things down, people see on Instagram and Twitter. All. That's just that's the only but, thing that just doesn't make sense to me. Hating the fans, I get it. I hate us too. The, I mean, the whole the whole idea <laughs> is Sammy <laughs> is coming to work. He's he's jerking the WWE around by <laughs> by saying he's gonna come to work. They're gonna give him you know time. I to love it. Out. And then he's it. not going to do anything. That's Finally, actually, yeah. It's, it's actually quite innovative when if you actually look past it and just, mm-hmm. an, just analyze it a little bit. Because Sammy, the next thing Sammy's going to do is he's going to come out for a match and then he's going to say, no, I'm not wrestling for you guys. I'm going home. Damn, yeah, I, 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 there's nothing that I've been able to argue Scooter with yet. That's yeah. a, exactly what I think, too. I, I think that too. That, that that sounds like it would make sense. But I also like they they're get, feeding him those lines to make. I mean, I don't think they're feeding him because he's basically introspecting and making all these fickle fans look at themselves in the mirror. 
which is like, yo, uh, this shit there. A I, lot I of them to- got deaf ears, though. They don't care. I mean, it's deaf ears, but there's that 10%. <laughs> if, if you could get the 10%, because like they said, there's always 10% oh, of something. Oh, wait. For, for, for God's sake, they don't wash their ass when they go to <laughs> meet Red Sakes. They, 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 they need to give Sammy a beach ball. <laughs> well, no, because he'd be over like he'd no. be over like Rover with a beach ball. <laughs> and then Cesaro comes out and stomps him. I just remember like when Chris Jericho used to come out and he was like, "I'm the best in the world at what I do," and he used to call us parasites. But, and I was right, like, so CM yeah, Punk didn't start that. We we deserve to be called parasites. <laughs> Well, but real quick though, I'm glad you said that because that right there, CM Punk didn't come up with best in the world. That was Jericho. Who started oh yeah, without doubt. Uh, uh, you brought that yeah, up. Yeah. Punk was. People get. Oh, the oh! I just forgot. I, there's one more news item, but go ahead. I'll go ahead, Scott. The segment's over, Mitch. Yeah. No, but it's this is a serious one that I just no, forgot. No, <laughs> he's gonna talk about CM Punk wrestling in a Punk mask. in a mask yeah. in Milwaukee. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Segment yeah. over. Yeah, go for it. Hey, okay. Uh, were you going to talk about it, Scott? You, know, you go ahead and talk about it if no, you were. No, no you, you can talk about it. I just let, I just, uh, let you into it. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, man. No, I, no, I feel, no, I feel no, like I an was, asshole. No, I wasn't prepared to talk about it. Go ahead. Okay, all right, all right. But anyway, okay. So, a uh, masked man came in, and Ace Steel is the man who trained CM Punk. And um, it, it, there was a building that CM Punk, it was one of his first matches he had in Milwaukee, and it, the building's coming down soon. And so he put on a mask and went in, gave a GTS, and then fake up, but then and ran out. Now, he's done it. Uh-oh. So, oh. Yeah. Audio. Yeah. Go so, hey, if you guys want to. And he'd say anything about it. He uh, came, GTS, and he conquered. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. okay, that doesn't so mean he's coming. Does everybody think that means he's no, coming back? Oh, that okay. He but here, no, That's but I, sure. I was waiting for you, for you guys to give your opinions to finish up the second part. But the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, um, so he, he, uh, I am having a blank. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Here, go ahead. Okay. Punk wrestled. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't take off the mask. Uh, oh, and that, 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 that's basically it. Okay? No, so, it's uh, well, uh, Okay, here's what I was trying to say. Here's what I was trying to say, though, was that uh, CM Punk at an ESPN had an interview in ESPN. If you go back to 2016, he said, yeah, I quote, if I ever come back to wrestling, I'm never coming back to WWE, but I might come back in a uh, very Monty Python-ish way, where I wear a mask and no one knows it's me. End quote. And uh, I'm just glad that he's coming back. And you know, they always say never, back. but <laughs> never say never. Yeah, I don't think he's coming back. I think he's just doing a few little. Yeah, yeah. never say never. But I'm hoping yeah, he gets yeah. the itch and say, "Well, yeah, I was good at this. Maybe I should." I'm going to see him punk stand. That motherfucker ain't coming back. But. Because, the, yeah, the men, the, so many times I've heard CM Punk confirmed, CM Punk confirmed. I just want to throw up. I'm like, stop saying that. I just, let's not even think about it. If he comes back, he comes back great. But he, he, everyone is like, uh, they're stuck on it. So, yeah. I, and they need to move on. You, he's going to come back. I believe <laughs> that whole holiday. We'll I say I, 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 I agree with that. I, I think CM Punk's gonna come back, but I I expected that to to be to wait like a Brock Lesnar amount of time. We'll see, we'll see, because the only thing that can heal any wounds is time. And last I checked, time right is a long time. And he's a dude, and he looks like the dude that old like now, fam. He he gonna be he gonna be out for a while. Yeah. So, so going on to the next segment, uh, Cesaro defeated uh, the debuting Cedric Alexander. Cesaro caught Alexander with an uppercut to the pinfall. Um, I'm just glad like Cedric Alexander does life after two or five, 
And yes. I know that Mitch is a, a big fan of Cesaro. Uh, so I was just going to say, they, if I, they did what I they listened to me. Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to say, like, you know, uh, you're finally getting that Cesaro plus, and we'll see what happens there. I mean, but this is yeah, not the first Yeah, but he's a star. Play. He's been a star. This yeah, the but because they pulled the... They pulled the carpet from underneath them both times, though, Scooter. But yeah, but I think this was more of a chance to showcase Cedric Alexander, not Cesaro. Then why did Cesaro win? I don't know. Because, because it was a, it was a. Yeah, if you want to push a new guy like, I, I don't know. The right guy won because yeah. it's basically to show you like yeah. Yo, I, this I, is, this I, I think Cesaro. I think Cesaro's a future champion. And I think they finally might realize it and push him again. No, I don't but, know. but keep no. it, keep it, keep it. Don't, don't I, it, uh, take the hard carpet. And the reason oh, I say, dude, you don't. Know I'm sorry, but on this, you don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. I, I, I get what you're saying, but here's here's he's why one he of the strongest men in wrestling. He yeah. To showcase that there's a difference between 205 live and, and going above 205. It's right, just, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the main roster, yeah. Yeah, it was, show, it was the show like, yo, this wait, 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 welcome to the fucking big show. So, like, I get what you're saying. Like, unless he was money in the bank, then, then I'll shut the fuck up. But until, until, until that they have faith in him, I'm not, nah. Because I see... They give him, they gave that motherfucker so much promise after thirty. It didn't make no damn sense, and they just fucked <laughs> him up. So I, I've seen. I knew where you come from. But Cesaro, right. he sabotaged uh, himself. That's my point. He had an opportunity to say, "And here, this is what I'm doing, and f all you guys." And he got in he that did. Room, And he said, "I'm the best in these four, these four rooms, oh, you mean, oh, okay. those four corners." And that destroyed what? him completely. No, and plus, it, and plus, it, and plus, it gives him the look, like the showcase, like to reintroduce himself. Because think about it, he's been stuck with the bar for so long, and right. God knows the Sheamus might have like a life-ending fuck, uh, career-ending concussion. So he's he's got, had injury. He's been dealing with injuries and dealing with possible retirement on the on the upcoming you know spectrum. So. So you know, um, this is a bit, yeah, this has been kind of in the in the oven for a while. This split. I mean, you know, I'm gonna just throw this up there for a minute. I'm up, so I scoot I'll I won't cut you off again. Okay. Uh, but Cesaro had a tag team with Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger went away. He had a tag team with Tyson Kidd. Okay. Tyson Kidd uh, retired. I, and now, I get where you're going with that. I have something to say about it. Go ahead. Then he had a tag team with Sheamus, and now Sheamus potentially retired. Is this guy... The curse of Cesaro? Real, real quick, real quick. I get where you're coming from, but doesn't that say more about WWE creative than it does them, the wrestlers? How? They keep getting injured with Cesaro as their tag team partner. I'm not saying Yeah, but, but I mean... It, it, Cesaro as a jinx, yeah. May, like maybe I like, can that. That's probably the point you're trying to make. You can't hold Cesaro responsible for anything that's personally happened to them. I mean, Sheamus's ankle injury not a result of you know, yeah, you know, Cesaro. Oh, no, I understand that, but I'm not holding him. Uh, I'm freezing. My phone's freezing. I'm just, I'm just saying, like you know, there's a pad on him. Uh, however, I would not put it past the WWE to uh, give Cesaro money in the bank. That's where I'm hearing. I can't I'm hear hearing anything. Bias. That's where I'm hearing. Because I'm hearing it might be. Uh, I'm. I'm. The rumor is they want the money in the big winners. Uh, the male money in the big winners to come out looking like superstars this year. I would, I would hope so because they've been fucking failing it the last couple of years. Yeah. Like, and, and I get why they fail it because they, they wanted to make it look like an actual gamble. Like, I, I get that point. Like, not every, you know what I'm saying? You can still be at the right time to put it on the line and still lose, right? Like, I get that point. But the whole point of Money in the Bank was to highlight and accentuate that next guy. Well, who yeah. was the last put? Who won Money in the Bank last year? Uh, Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman, and he lost it at 
Um, the Hole in the Saudi- he, yeah, he announced he announced he was cashing it in uh, at, at not at, at the not Saudi at Arabia. Yeah, yeah. And then he lost. And then the year before, Baron Corbin loses to Jinder Mahal of all people. Yeah, yeah. loses to Jinder Mahal due to John Cena. And then the year prior, I think it was Dean Ambrose. And he uh, actually won. No, no, no and Ambrose, he actually won. Amber 2016, yeah, 2016, and but Ambrose cashed in that same night, right? So like that's what I'm saying. Like it's like they got their failures in, right? Like John Cena failed, Damian Sandow failed, Baron Corbin failed, Braun Strowman failed. So now it kind of evens out where it's like a real 50-50 shot, right? Like yeah, but, but that kind of sucks because that was the, so interesting about the Money in the Bank was that it was you're guaranteed the championship, and they have these awesome gimmicks and then they just kill them off with shit like that. I think the the worst one was for Sandow when Sandow went down. Oh my god! Yeah, that killed like, him. That killed him. Like that. That's where it was like make or break, and it broke his ass. But. The rest of them, like Corbin, he's young enough. Um, Strawman, he's he's still over with the people. So I mean, yeah. does it kill him too much? But that one was the one that was a killer. The only one that really like made sense was John Cena because he was credible enough to lose the money in the bank and you know get up. He still be John Cena. But he also did it differently where he like uh, he was like the first guy to go, yo, I'm letting you know that I'm cashing it in next week, right? Like he didn't sneak up on a motherfucker. Well, well the technically, was technically the Rob Van Dam. Yep, Rob Van Dam was the first person. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. But he was the one that did it like he – because John Cena did it the, the John Cena way. Yo, I'm letting <laughs> you know that I'm such good on this show, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so. noble bastard. <laughs> the Duke of Wrestling, John Cena. I swear yeah. to God. Right. <laughs> uh, 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 if you haven't noticed already, we lost Mitch uh, due to technical uh, issues. Well, he'll get, he'll come back when he comes back. Uh, <laughs> on to the next match, or just maybe just the segment, the story. The Viking Raiders took on the Lucha Hash Party uh, and just uh, decimated uh, them. Now, now the Viking Warriors. Did they confirm that they're going to be Viking Warriors, or is that yep. just something they're trying? They, no, they, they were the Viking Warriors on Monday night. The the Titan Tron said it. No, they were the Viking Raiders. Yeah. No, the, the Titan Tron said Viking Warriors. This is, Man, this I don't is know. No, 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 I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, it was Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders, but I think they're changing it to Viking. I don't know. They They screwed up. Yeah. I also think that we got Mitch Mayhem back. He's back. He's back. And... Yeah. I actually can't. Yeah. I wish you couldn't. Okay. So uh, Mitch uh, first elected from the dead. We got him back. Uh, if you could find it in your heart to maybe like donate to get him a new laptop, that would just be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> a new phone. A new phone. A new phone. He's, yeah. I'm not asking for much, people. My, my laptop just for some reason won't pop up Hangouts. So I don't know why. Time for the GoFundMe. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. So we're talking about the Viking Raiders, the Viking Experience, War Machine, uh, War Raiders, yeah. Viking Warriors. Real, real quick, uh, I messaged you about this, James. Uh, I bef- Okay, before they made the change. I literally thought to myself, okay, what would WWE call it? Uh, does Viking Raiders sound too corny and too, like, because they're both and the Raiders are teams. Would that work? And then I see on the... Are they typing into my... Uh, do they have a machine I don't know about that they can type into my thoughts? Yeah, they have that on my brain, too. <laughs> like, I used to put the... And Gold Dust going to AEW. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, I could. Why can't they just be Viking machine? Like that would be the best best. Viking, Viking, Viking machine. Viking Raiders are good. I like the Viking Raiders. I think. Go ahead, Scott. 
Vikings didn't use machines. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say that, dude. Like, okay, Viking Raiders, I can understand. Viking Warriors, I can understand. That was an oxymoron. Like, right. Like, well, like, a machine. I mean, coupled with the fact that they called Ember Moon the friggin' war goddess last week. Did they? Uh, oh, I missed that. Oh, okay, thank God I missed yeah, that. They, yeah, I did not catch that. The yeah, they called her the war goddess. And immediately is when they said that, I'm like, oh, you hypocrites. <laughs> <laughs> you should be used to that by WWE yeah. television creative now. No, yeah. yeah. By now. That's yeah. Like you know yeah, what? I could get back. We've all been disappointed in the new heights. But we could all agree that the Viking Raiders is like a shit name or whatever. What about Eric and Ichabar? Because th those yeah, are just the shit. It's not Ichabar, it's Ichabar. Ichabar Crane! Ichabar Crane, bro. I don't give a shit. That's what he I is. Know you, there should be a wrestler named Ichabar Crane. Oh, no. maybe you think. Sammy Callahan. Make him Ichabar Crane. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it literally went to a random name generator. Like, give us, give us one I of know, right? random Norwegian names. You can right, yeah, a, a Nordic, yeah, a Nordic have, uh, have, name search. I have never heard any of, of any Norwegian or Nordic person or Scandinavian person named Thank you. Ivar. And then, and then they do Eric, but they think, oh no, we gotta get fancy with it. It's with a K. <laughs> I, I I had a friend in high school who spelled his name that way. Actually. Oh, I knew I knew many people who did. Yeah, but they were Nordic. They were really from no, like they were Nordic. It was Nordic Nordic descent. Uh, you know, I actually uh, just putting it out there. I think that's for uh, those names are from like uh, a well-known Viking book or novel or oh, some right, shit like yeah. that. They, they, they went online and they searched for Viking names, like Scooter just said exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. And, uh, and that, that's the millions of dollars creatives getting. That's where it's going to. Well, I don't. Uh, Ren or you know Steeg or. The yeah, I Mars. have. I have no <laughs> idea. They're not Jaime and Ishmael to me. They're uh, Rowan Hansen. You just said it again. You said Ishmael though this time. <laughs> and Jaime. I'm just, I, it's funny to me. It, it's, it's on yeah, me. I'm not, I'm not going to try one of these names. I, they're handsome and more to me. It's, it's kind of like that one show where you just keep fucking up the name on on purpose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eric and Ichabar. Uh, Eric and uh, Ivana uh, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> I believe what that was his name now. <laughs> Ivari from day to day. <laughs> All right, uh, another match, but actually more of a story. Robert Roode, back to Robert Roode, defeated Ricochet in 11 minutes and 11 seconds with a glorious DT for a clean pinfall. This is actually Ricochet's first uh, loss on TV. Mm -hmm. And what a glorious mustache. Oh, man, I, get to that. I hear porno music in my head when I saw that. <laughs> But uh, real quick though, real quick though, this was in Robert Roode. Good, thank you. He's not a kid anymore. Don't call him Bobby anymore. There's already a Bobby, Bobby Lashley. So Robert Roode, it fits him more. And uh, I've been saying this, like with Cesaro, Rusev, now Nakamura. I think the Nakamura and Rusev stuff has to do with contracts, but nonetheless. And then Robert Roode. All in the category of me saying they should all be pushed. They all are championship material. Well, so Robert Roode is they finally like, cut him from Chad Gable. Nothing against Chad Gable, but he didn't deserve that. It, but Roode didn't. He deserves to be in higher programs in singles programs. Well, um, I mean, are you sure that's not the Brawny Man instead of like Robert Roode. <laughs> Wait, what? Say again. I mean, he looks more like the the dude on the brawny paper towels than Robert Roode. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know they were going for a Rick Roode. They, they, because they start talking about who's got a Lamborghini or something, like, and he, he's going to oh. take your woman. So they're doing the Rick. They're doing the Rick Roode thing. I mean, do but, you? They were doing that. You know, for you, uh, Mitch, you forget how Roode made his career. It was yeah. a mustache. No, it, that was not no, lost on me. In a, in a tag team. Oh, oh, of course, with, uh, yeah, the, the Canadians. Yeah. Beer money. Beer. 
and money. Money. Oh, well, that was not their start, but he he was in many tag teams with the the Canadian. I forget what they were called, but then, Team Canada. You know, okay, but then you go to the uh, you know, with Chris Harris. That was a great uh, mo uh, America's Most Wanted. No, he was. Uh, he that, was that was James, James Storm. Oh, what am I talking about? What are you yeah, talking about, Mitch? Robert Rubin were beer money Inc. <laughs> Could I? <laughs> You know, what Mitch, bag. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Mitch, I have to disagree with you because um, oh, oh, wow. Chad Gable, uh, he didn't deserve that either. Chad Gable makes chicken salad out of chicken shit with everything he does, and he makes it work, and he gets it over. And now that but, he's on but they shit on him, and they don't give him a chance. They just bury him every time. Well, hopefully he gets a chance now as singles, and Bobby Roots is where he strives. He's a heel. That's he's a heel. Um. By the way, real quick, I was thinking of Eric Young. I was thinking of Eric Young and Bobby, uh, Robert Bobby Root, whatever. Yeah. They were a tag team. Okay. And um, he's he's and what is he's gonna strive at, and that's being a heel, and. It's going to show that he's going to get that opportunity by showing them, hey, I'm really good at being this. Bobby Roode as a, a baby face? Crap. No, no smiley, no what? good guy. He's a bad guy. What? Yeah, I will agree 10,000% with you. That's where they dropped the ball. He's not a face. He's not a good guy. He is a natural heel. When Scooters talked about natural heels, there's a definition of a natural heel for you, in my opinion. Yeah. So, you guys thought. What? Hello? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, we here. Yeah, I'm just like, you guys haven't anything to say on that. Or... Uncomfortable. I mean, silence. he's a better heel than a face, so it yeah. makes sense. But is he, I mean, is he caught in, you know, you know, you know, push limbo where, you know, they don't exactly know. Right. What to do with him? I mean, yeah. I mean, he's not gonna, he's not gonna be chasing the mid card title. Uh, they gave him the first win over Ricochet. You know what? I got a new term for that. I call it the creative crossroads. Uh, I call it the, well, it's yeah, it's the Baron Cor <laughs> the Baron Corbin uh, vortex of mid card hell. <laughs> the the cor the Corbin the Corbin creative uh, crossroads. That's where. <laughs> You know, uh, Coleco just coining another great phrase. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? That's basically it. The creative I mean... process. <laughs> Either he going left to get pushed or going right to go to cater. Either way, the crowd won't care. <laughs> like I said, yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, man. So. But, uh, no, earlier, but I'm sorry, real quick. When I screwed that. I had TNA on the brain when I talked about America's Most Fun, and I screwed up my TNA uh, tag team. Because TNA back then they they had kind of the same kind. Of, America's Most Wanted, Beer Money, they kind of reminded me of each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway. Okay. Um. The yeah. next, the our main event: AJ Styles defeated Baron Corbin in 13 minutes and six seconds. That is what it is. Uh, main storyline here is uh, AJ Styles will be fighting Seth freaking Rollins at Money in the Bank. I mean, Any thoughts? It's a match. Uh, it's a match they uh they have yet to do. Uh, no doubt AJ and Seth will deliver at least a three and a half star, maybe even guaranteed four star. Uh, match. Uh, I mean the question is, is putting AJ in the title picture technically <laughs> the right thing to do since it's face versus face? Should there be a heel chasing Seth Rollins? I mean, you have the, you have Seth Rollins, who's the friggin' beast slayer, and they're gonna they're gonna act like he's almost indestructible. Yeah, but um, AJ could possibly turn heel, but uh, and just to what you said, uh. A four star match, if that was in the Tokyo Dome, it'd be a ten star match. I'm just putting that out there. So yeah, um Tokyo Dome main event right there. Uh 
Oh, and H.A. is back. It, you know, it's kind of weird. It seems like H.A. Styles from those from January to April, he doesn't really do anything. But then when it comes back to around May, he's right back into the title picture and where he's supposed to be. It seems like WrestleMania time, they kind of forget about A.J. Styles. Well, this is the first year where he wasn't either the ti- like the main event or, or the I mean the contender or the champion from Survivor Series until like Mania time. He was kind of chill on the label, you know. Yeah, but 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 that's the first time. Like it, usually, he is always working, like it, working his ass off. In fact, but hello. Yeah, I hear you. He's um. It's just weird that because like he was in the title picture with John Cena at uh, a couple of years ago, he lost that Royal. I'm having technical difficulties. I think I have, I see something weird. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just had to tell you that I don't think Cleco can hear me. Okay. Yeah, it seems like AJ just gets that that uh, cold soda for WrestleMania time. Whether it be uh, losing the belt at WrestleMania uh, at Royal Rumble to Cena, uh, and fighting Shane McMahon or or fighting Randy Orton this year. It just seems like he got that one main event and that was it. But I, I don't think so. I don't think that's bad. Because if you look at his WrestleMania resume, he went from Chris Jericho to, to what, Shane McMahon. Yeah. To Nakamura. Yeah. To Randy Orton. That's not a bad lineup that he went against. No, but... But, 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 but what I keep telling everybody is this. WrestleMania is... Everyone thinks WrestleMania is the big the big thing for wrestling. It is not. SummerSlam is the wrestlers' WrestleMania. WrestleMania is just the common people's WrestleMania. Like all the good matches that happens goes down I mean, between like May and September. Like that's where like the 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 greatest storylines comes up because the Money in a Bank, which is technically like its own freaking big four pay-per-view starts and it kicks off everything going to SummerSlam. That's just me. But Yeah, I mean, I see where you're coming from, but I don't agree per se on that. I mean, I mean WrestleMania but, is WrestleMania. SummerSlam I mean, is the heel WrestleMania. WrestleMania. But SummerSlam is the, the... Think about it. All these dream matches that you get and all these pretty good matchups, they... You get the best matches at WrestleMania at, at SummerSlam by WrestleMania, because because SummerSlam is not going to be an eight hour long manifesto. It's going to be about three hours, and and you can only get the best that you could get by WrestleMania. They're trying to get everybody paid. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, uh, predictions. Who do you think is going to win? AJ or Seth? Seth has to win. Yeah, Seth, Seth, has to win. Seth wins, but it's going to be one hell of a match, and they're going to go probably 20 minutes. But, so I, but I wouldn't be surprised if like it's like this thing where it's a DQ and they continue this shit to get to SummerSlam. Well, but I was just going to say, you maybe I, work a program to SummerSlam. Because I think SummerSlam would be the biggest but, where it would make more sense for them to have their best match. But you know. What about you, Scooter? But Who do you think is going to win? Baby face for... You think Vince would do that? I mean, they're gonna that work long. it anyway because they got that they, long cause... though. That long? I, yeah. For uh, the summer, I don't they see got... that. I don't see him doing face versus face for three months. I mean, I, I I'll tell you this right now. I no, they're not gonna do face face. But... Come, come SummerSlam, it's it's gonna be McIntyre. I agree with that. Yeah. That's if, uh, to me. No, no. I I wouldn't think Mac unless he wins Money in the Bank. See, my thing is this. If he wins money in the bank, it's a totally different game. But does Drew McIntyre need to win money in the bank to get that title right. opportunity? Exactly. Because I don't I don't see a path to him Absolutely getting... Absolutely make their career the if they won. I don't see a path him getting to the title shot until unless he wins money in the bank. All right. Drew well, McIntyre or Samoa Joe should win Money in the Bank if I was Joe's booking. Not, Joe's not going to compete in the Money in the Bank match. Yeah, Joe's not in the Money in and the if Bank I was match. booking. <laughs> I said if I was booking. Well, you're not, Mitch. I, I think they came out with who's going to be in Money in the Bank, though. I, I think they yeah. came out. I think so, yeah. They already did. Yeah, right. They're, they're announcing on Monday who's going to compete in it. Yeah. 
I mean, they pushed it. And Joe's got the U.S. Yeah. title, so. You and know, feud everybody. With, uh, feud with Strowman. That's right. That's right. They're still going to do that. They were going to do that before his injury. Everybody went with uh, Seth Rollins. I'm going to be the, the crazy one here. I'm going to say they give it to uh, Styles. Styles turns heel and wins the Universal Championship. You think they would switch to that soon after Mania? Yes. I don't. I think I, you're crazy. Styles need. Styles don't need. Styles doesn't need money in the bank though. Like that. To me, oh. the people that are going to be in money in the bank and I. Oh no! Not uh, you, Styles know. isn't going to win money in the bank. He's going to win Universal Championship. Oh hell no! He's not winning the Universal. <laughs> yeah, no. I say he's going to win. Not over, not over Seth fucking Rollins. They're homegrown fucking wrestler. Hell no, they ain't. But I he's the damn. he's the face that runs the place. But he in a new okay, he's real, in a new town like shit. You know, <laughs> real quick. Okay, I'm gonna say what I, I'm, I'm right now. I'm tapping my mind into the Vince McMahon way of thinking. I'm <laughs> scared that he might. I mean, I'm right. He's been doing good so far, so I'm not scared so much. But I don't know how it would go over if Miz won Money in the Bank. Who? Cool. That's if Miz even gets Miz. money in the bank. I'm just saying that, like, with Shane and I, I don't know. We'll get some money in the bank predictions when, we, when they announce who's actually going to be in the match. Watch. I think... I'm telling you, it's going to be a bunch of people where you can see the – I'll put it this way. There's always going to be okay. – like, with money, in, with money in the bank, they always have, like, the high flyer, the fucking guy that's won it before where you can see him winning it again. Oh, and then you have a, a a bunch of <laughs> oh, mixed God, no. other people and, and a bunch of mixed people where it's going to be like you can see them winning where it could catapult them right so i, I i'm telling you it, it's going to it's going to be none of the people that we but i think it's going to be a new group of people the only person well, i can guarantee will be in is probably maybe Strowman and McIntyre cuz McIntyre, you see him winning it, and it makes him, and then Strowman, because he's like the defending champion. Well, I've heard, okay, I've, I've heard from the little birdies who chirp uh, in my ear that this year they are, like, they're not going to drop the ball on whoever wins money in the bank like they had the last two years, um, that they're going to strap a rocket to whoever wins and make a star out of whoever wins well, money. That's good news. Year. We'll see, but oh, that's just what I've heard. Jumping over to SmackDown, the major story coming out of SmackDown was Kofi Kingston got assaulted by new New Day member Big O, and Kevin Owens oh, is God. back as the heel that we all know and love. Hold on, real quick, you missed something on Raw. You oh, well, it's Raw right now. We'll bring it up. The Bray Wyatt thing. Oh, ahead, you're Sorry. absolutely was right. It was on, but it was on both Raw and SmackDown. So yeah, that's why yeah. I caught myself. I said, "Oh, it's on both." Uh, Never yeah. mind. We'll do it later. First, yeah. first of all, I have to resent the WWE for using the name the Big O. Uh, yeah. A Big O was a uh, homegrown Hi. creation of my uh, indie fed, the New York Wrestling Connection. He was a former NYWC champion. He was Zack Ryder's oh, really? most friend on YouTube. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, guy, guy couldn't yep. wrestle for crap. Uh, well, you would know that Kevin, the Kevin Owens. You would think he would know then. If I mean, are you yeah, calling yeah. copyright infringement here? Uh, it no, sounds like gimmick infringement to me. Gimmick, gimmick infringement, not yeah. copyright infringement. The right, fact, you know, gimmick. Like, yeah, I said gimmick infringement. No, they they could have called they could have called them you know special K. <laughs> 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 and then you yeah, it's a double connotation. It's a serial and a drug. <laughs> coming up in that bitch. Nah, they wouldn't. They rather go big O. <laughs> yeah, big O tires. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Owens is reduced to an orgasm, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? Yeah. Uh, I did not. Owens has a face. I wanted to throw up. He was so corny, too corny for me. And it was yeah. like it wasn't like the natural like Kofi Kingston, Biggie, Xavier, like funny corny. It was yeah. like the, the obviously like he's forcing it kind of corny. But yeah, the way that they brought him in, he I mean, but uh, but the turn made it worth it because like, he is a he is a natural heel as well. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was gonna bring up. He works better as a heel, and 
I don't think they could have picked a stronger heel to go into but, Kofi's first rivalry. Yeah, right. that's what I think it too, yeah. I agree, but ironically, before WrestleMania, you do know that the plans for Kevin Owens were to make him a all-American type face who eats, uh, eats eats junk, junk food, food yeah. He eats junk food and, and, like to relate to relate to the poutine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God that the that, that's an inside joke. That's an inside joke. But um, yeah, just like the everyday man, don't know the everyday slob to connect with like the slobs at home. Though. Yeah. Well, thank God that the stick because I like my Kevin Owens <laughs> as a heel. Yes, Kevin drink Owens your, stays a heel. Drink your, drink your poutine every day. Nah, he, yeah, he's a better heel. Oh, like, let's draw. <laughs> Sorry. But, I mean, but what happened happened to get it going, and it gives Kofi that first legit guy who got kicked his ass, and, yeah. and, and you could actually see as a champion. And, and, and this underdog role. You know. And the Kevin Owens. From NXT, the the badass, like I'm not listening to anyone. That's the real Kevin Owens, and that's the one they need to stick with. Yeah, he hasn't changed a lot since coming up on the main roster. Only yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, I mean, he cut down a little bit on weight. I mean, but he's still he's no. Still I mean, personality fat. wise. I'm say it. Oh no, he hasn't changed still himself. He, I mean, in the with the face stuff when he was acting like he was going to be with New Day, he was acting a little corny. Like I said, yeah. I didn't like that. But it, it, to me, it was obvious. It, I'm sure it was obvious to Scooter too that uh, it, Kevin was gonna. All right. It was it, like to me, it was obvious. All right, guys. I, I saw him hug and everything. It's time to get to the main event. What we've all been wanting to talk about: Bray Wyatt as Mr. <laughs> fucking Rogers. <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it. Finally, they hit a home run and came up with a creative idea that has some honest to God like potential. It, they, now they can drop the ball on it like they did with the original Bray Wyatt gimmick, but this has so much potential. But he went from cult leader to children's TV host. That I don't he's, think. It, I he's, don't think I, but that's not what the gimmick is. The angle I, is that I, he's struggling with his good and bad self. Yeah, I don't think it's a. I don't think he's like going for. He's still a cult leader, but right. it's just he's and, just a cult leader dealing with the fact that he's trying not to be a cult leader. Exactly right. And did you see the gloves? What when he did the peekaboo? One said heel and one said hurt. One said heart. Yeah, heel and heart. And, like, it, 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 the gimmick is uh, it, it's basically boiled down to him fighting his inner demons and trying not to go back to the old prey. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what, do, what do you think, Scooter? What do you think on this? Uh, I th I I like it. It's got it does have the potential. I agree with that. Um, is is this gonna? Are we truly gonna see? You know, Bray Wyatt really like you know beyond sp yeah. beyond spouting you know all that stuff that kind of that sounds good in your ear. Um. One thing to point out is there are three characters in the logo: the bird, the puppet, That's and right. the rabbit. We uh -huh. don't we don't see the rabbit. Bray Wyatt is the rabbit. That's an interesting thought. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. One... But then again, everyone thought overthought that Sister Abigail thing, saying, "Oh, maybe it's Rosemary," and then it turned out to be him in makeup. <laughs> yeah, but uh. But at, that was but, they, that was such a shit. They sure they could have. They had so much. But, they dropped the ball on that. Yeah. The, the the doll is Sister Abigail. Right. Right. Yeah. right well, well, Abby the witch. Right. Yeah. The fact that he's like, you know, has he like learned to like contain? Like, I love it. Like the the, the evil uh, within <laughs> him inside, like the doll. It's like <laughs> like for some reason, and th this comes to mind. <laughs> it seems like. It's drawing from um, Mr. Rogers well, and, five, and, oh, that's five, obvious. and Five Nights at Freddy's. I saw, yeah, the mixture. I see that. Yep, I see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I told you like earlier, it just like hugged me up scared. It, it's yeah. where like, optimism meets pessimism. And the crossroads. Uh, but... but sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. 
No, go, no. It to me it is that because I get why everyone was like upset about him losing all the time, but when he was with that type of the way he was playing, it wasn't about winning and losing to him. Like winning and losing really didn't matter to Bray Wyatt in that form. So I'm trying to figure out how they're gonna do it with. This. I want right, yeah. I want to see. Right. Where we have to see more than Mets, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because it, it seems like they're trying to get their next Undertaker in the sense of trying to put fear in people. Like Right, until. right, right. Well, real so, quick, I, um, to sum this this up with Bray Wyatt, uh, a tweet, there was a tweet that sums it up perfectly, where I had a uh, father tweeted um, about Bray Wyatt. Oh, my daughter thinks this, man, this guy is funny. Now I'm going to have to buy her a chainsaw. And which, to which he replied, I grew up with a chainsaw, and look how I turned out. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> one thing that I read online, uh, now this is just a suggestion rather than a rumor, is that a Bray Wyatt might actually kidnap Braun Strowman's old tag team partner, Nicholas, and there's a rivalry there. Gonna take John Cohn's son. Yeah. And that that would be really interesting. But then you gotta wonder where do they draw a line with bringing in involving children? Right, because that like the creep factor. They like you gotta. There's gotta be a line there, but you also have to push it to that line where it okay. works. You know who actually comes to mind for for that? What you just said. Uh, Dominic. Dominic Rayson? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it did the custody, the custody yeah, for that, Dominic. That's true. Okay. Dominic on a pole match. That's true. Okay. I'll give you that one, Scooter. I'll give you that yeah. one. Like, the child support on a pole. I didn't <laughs> think about that. But And Dominic's trying to get into the business. There's so many uh, second and third generation stars trying to kick like, in. Yeah, the next, uh, the next, uh, like Brian Pillman Jr., etc. The next uh, generation of wrestlers are females, because all of them basically had daughters. Yeah, they, they, they're, right. um, their right. toxic masculinity got them <laughs> they, have to, they have to look at it from a different perspective now. <laughs> okay, it's time to switch to a new topic. We are, wrestling with the best of the Super Junior entries. And I'm going to uh, run off some of the uh, all the yeah, entries. I already, I already saw the list, oh, but yeah, let's, uh, yeah. let's go I've ahead. Rep you sending... There's one I have, yeah, specific comments on. Go ahead. Res, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, representing LIJ, Shingo Takake. It's his first um, best of the Super Juniors. He didn't eat breakfast that day to make weight. <laughs> yeah, because he was at point nine 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 nine. Wow. He's German? <laughs> that was great. Did that, uh... that was great. That was great. Yeah. All right, go on. It's funny because like he could <laughs> uh he could uh eat a cheeseburger and be in the G one this year. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Next up entry Bushi, it's his uh, seventh entry and four consecutive. Yep. So mm -hmm. you got your L I J representation. Although I want my boy to come back, Hiromu Takahashi. I can't wait till he comes Tana back. Boy. He was gonna, like I said, he was gonna take Tanahashi. He was gonna win the title, and then well, he got injured. Well, I'm going. Uh, I'm gonna save my uh, Tana, uh, Takahashi prediction for after we uh, do this. Real quick, real quick, and we're hearing it right now in uh, late April. You've heard it here first. Okada versus Takahashi at Wrestle Kingdom. Bold prediction, Mitch. Bold prediction. Representing Bullet Club, Taiji Ishimori. It's his third entry, second consecutive. Solid guy. 
I mean, it's... Yeah, he's, he's a yeah, solid performer. Sorry, the audio went out. Uh, what was that? Who was that? Taichi Ishimori. 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 Yeah, he... Ishimori. He, 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 like they said, he's okay. He, he doesn't stand out like some of the others, though, in my mind. Well, the way he walks is a standout. Oh. Yeah, but like I said, but I mean, he's got potential. He just, yeah. yeah, I think he needs to develop some more, in my opinion. Next up, uh, Made in China, Will Ospreay, Robbie Eagles. It's his first Super Juniors. Yeah, Anything Robbie Will Eagles. Ospreay. Oh, wait, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, because no, no, he... I just... He's basically the Australian version of Will Osprey. I, I just don't get him. But you know what's funny? Will Osprey's in the fucking tournament. <laughs> exactly. Not so like you went from never open to juniors. Like what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like yo. Well, his thing is he's gonna be in the Super Juniors, and he wants to be in the G One this year as well. He wants to do both. Oh, he's trying to be that guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm having trouble with the audio, but we're talking about Will Osprey, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and okay. Eagles. Robbie uh, Eagles. Okay. Well, I don't know about him or about Robbie Eagles, but Will Osprey, um, like he's got. We all know he's got possibly world champ written all over him in a few years. And JPW might go with him. Uh, I... I can see it. Debatable. Okay. Nice. They did, it, it, they did it like Kenny Omega. Okay. Uh, X. Uh, Kenny was, but Kenny was Japan though. Like he but, uh, well, well, also he's becoming, Japan. he's becoming no, that. He, nah, not like Kenny. Kenny's yeah. both Japanese. Well, what? Not yet. He's yeah, but he's building it. He was pretty much a Canadian Japanese citizen. That's pretty much what he was. He so was. Not... The next That's guy funny. up is uh X. It's his first. Super genius. Uh, that's the rumored guy that's been on the um the running traumas. Uh, I think his name's El Fantasma. Yes, El Fantasma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. Not really familiar yeah. with him, so it's gonna be interesting to see what he does with uh super genius. What? Which I know. Uh, which company did he come from before that? Before? I think Ref Pro. Yeah. Uh, he is. I mean, was it he's, AAA he's, or CMLO? He's technically, uh, he's technically representing New Japan. He's okay. a part of Bullet Club. He's, he's the newest member of the Bullet Club. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't hear about that yet. Yeah. Catch up on your New Japan match, damn it! I know we've been over this. Yes. We've been over this. I keep texting Mitch. Watch New Japan. Watch New Japan. <laughs> Next up, representing Suzuki Gun, Taka Mishinuku, seventh like, entry, first and four years. Wait, hold on. I, 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 got, I have one what? word to say in regard to that. So the audio keeps coming in and out. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yes. But, but he's a veteran hand. He's going to. He's probably gonna go against him for his first time in big oh, like, Punaki. Have him have him look good, you know. So it's his first time in four years. Yeah. Uh yeah, that would be good just to see Punaki in the ring and wrestling with uh today's stars. Yeah. Wait, Punaki? Mitch. Is that who we're talking about? Mishinoku! Dude. Yeah, but yeah, I can't hear. The audio keeps cutting in and out. It's then not. fix and fix it, Mitch. Damn it, we're doing a podcast. It's my shitty phone. I told you, Hangouts is horrible for my phone. <laughs> we got it. It's all you. Go, go find me. Get this boy Chromebook. Yeah. Please. <laughs> we need Mitch to be more audible. Okay, next up. Yoshinobu Katamaru. Dirt entry, dirt consecutive. Dirt consecutive. Kanemaru. I mean, uh, you got a couple of these dudes that are going to be in, and, you know, it's to make oh, them look good or make other people look good or make the younger people look good. Yeah, he, uh, he holds the uh, record for most range with the G2 Heavyweight Championship. That is true. We'll see, but I, but I don't see him as a favorite. No, no, not at all. Not at all. No, so, no way. I don't, yeah, I don't see him getting close. So, 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 he, 
He's there to make other people look good. Yeah, we have right. we haven't mentioned who I think is the odds on favorite yet. Well we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get into on. uh yeah. next up El Desperado. Short entry dark consecutive. I hate Despy. I mean I mean, gives him a chance to shine, you know. Like I said, it's 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 basically I I, I, I want to be, 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 be kind of my room. Room. And then, and then, oh, he's beautiful. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So Desperado, um, Despy, as we call him, basically a shithead. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, um, it's our chaos guys, and of course, chaos has four entries, but everybody either has uh three or three or two. Uh, Chaos has Will Osprey for an entry for consecutive and a 26 winner. 2016 mm -hmm. winner. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna win, but no. it just it, it just I guess that's just a filler to like make matches interesting. Uh, yeah, and to uh, attract the uh, the other uh, market. The Gaijins. Yeah, the Gaijins. Yeah. yeah. Next up for Chaos, uh, yo, third, uh, third entry, second consecutive. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Ta yo, tag team. Yo. yo, no, no, yo. No, no, no yo. What about, no, yo. what about show? Second entry, second consecutive. No show. No, oh. no show? I thought he was a breakout last year. Like, he really showed, like, he was the Shawn Michaels of this tag team. But as long as they keep Rapongi 3K together, then and I think aren't they? Uh, last I checked, they're still the tag team champs. Yeah. Or the juniors, they ain't no way. No, no, nah, hell no. Well, they might lose the them at the next pig preview uh, on May third or fourth. Man, as long as Rocky running around putting them together, which I already know you're gonna put that name in there. But as long as he's there, unless they like do a dissension in this tournament, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, okay. Well, that's the next one. Rocky Romero. Seventh entry, first in three years. This is really cool, I think, because Rocky Romero, I talked to Rocky in September, and he told me that he wanted to be in this tournament uh, because he kind of felt like his, um, his career is winding down and that he wants to have that one last uh, ride before he, like, you know, Fades into the background. I mean, I thought it wound it down after him and old boy broke up. Rapongi Vice broke up. So yeah, but I think this is like his, like kind of, sort of like his retirement, like his last hurrah. Man, his last hurrah was Rapongi Vice losing to the Bucks in Long in Long Beach. <laughs> that was his fucking swan song. Yeah, but <laughs> he still needs to get that paycheck. I mean, he's still, he's announcing, so it ain't like yeah. he's losing, he's matching, he's doing other shit, just ain't wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, representing Ring of Honor, we got Jonathan Grissom, it's his first, uh, Best of the Super Juniors. This guy is really yeah. good, but he's really, like, lacking personality in my book. Yeah, we can... I think we got you, but Jonathan Gresham, eh, we'll see. It's just it. I think this is the part where they go, oh, this is the uh the, the deal we have, so we can bring in some people here and fill up some names. Yeah. <laughs> well, one that might not be a filler is Bandito. It's his first best of the Super Juniors. Bandito's pretty hot right now. He might be a breakout. I, I can see him making it to the finals. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Next up, Marty Skull. Third entry, third consecutive. We kind of already know that uh, Marty's not going to be in this. He's not going to win. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I disagree. Really? Because really? I, I think he's on his way out the door. Yeah. I think it would be the, the ultimate uh, swerve, if you will. Um, given Marty's uh, you know, track record, I I think I think Marty I think Marty is the uh, 
the one to uh, look out for is not Bandito. Okay, I, I'll give you this. Depending on how he does against Nick Aldis this weekend, that'll let me know what they're going to do. That's a good indicator. I agree with um, that. Okay, okay. okay. Bye. I Bye. think that's a huge indication. of Because, I mean, it wouldn't make sense of being the NWA heavyweight champion and putting him in fucking Super Juniors. Like, it's counterintuitive. Yeah. The next guy, Flip Gordon, second entry, second consecutive. Uh, this guy could actually maybe replace Will Ospreay as that high flyer of the junior division if he's going to go up to a uh, heavyweight class. I mean, I would think Ospreay should have left. He should have left after he won the Never Open, so I don't get what the fuck, you know. I, I, I just don't know what they're going to do with him because they're going to need a bunch of heavyweight stars for this G1 because being now that's this is going to be their first G1 without Kenny Omega, so that's a big gap right there. Yeah. Ne uh, next representing CMLL, Dragon Lee. Uh, it's his third entry, third consecutive, and he is currently the IWGP Junior Champion. I, I never got why they would put let the champion compete in these things. Because, like, when Okada was the champ and he won. Like what? You know what I'm saying, like, what? What's the point? Like, what's the point if he wins? Like, well, if he wins, it's basically like he's the. Best. Well, that's where my point is going to come in at the end of this segment of who we're gonna, who's gonna win and what and why and the rhymes and reasons. But uh, yeah. well, that's later. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. And and but. I just like their mix, though. They have a mix of a lot of styles. It's a lot of high flyers, a lot of lucha libres, a lot of technicians. It's basically like a a, a better two hundred five live ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, go for maybe, it. Yeah, some boots. Okay. Probably should next up, long, to my time. up next, Titan. Oh, yeah. It's his third, uh, It's a second entry, first in six years. Uh, another one of those fillers, like, just to kind of get that. Uh, to me, it's just, like, I say about five people that could win, and the rest of these are kind of like fillers, or to give them shine, because, you know, just to, just to make matchups interesting. Yeah. And, and not make it so predictable, because that's the one thing New Japan does that no one else does better, is that when they do these tournaments, it's it's – who really like you've got an idea of who you think's gonna go, but you could definitely see how like it just swerves left and swerves right. Yeah. Like in an instant. So representing New Japan, and this is Master Filler, Tiger Mask. It's his eighteenth entry, eighteen consecutive, and he's won in O four and O five. Yeah, he's the ultimate filler boy. Who <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, why not bring the bring back the great Sasuke? I mean, my, why not put in Ultimo Dragon? Like, yeah, like, like. <laughs> he just tripped over himself. That's why. Um, <laughs> hey, is he Yoshi Hashi's father? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. And finally, Rizutsuke Taguchi. It's his eleventh entry. Uh, and ninth consecutive, and he actually won in 2012. Yeah, no. No. Yeah, no, no. for the disco dancer. Nope. So, so out of this field, we're looking at, and we didn't even put in flip. Um, so I'm thinking Dragon Lee, Marty Skrull, Bandito favorites. Those are my top three, not in any order. Okay, well, I'm going to call this. I'm going to say Dragon Lee wins. He gets to name his opponent for Dominion, and that name is to uh is Hiromu Takahashi. Time bomb. That would make sense because wasn't it him going against Dragon Lee was when he broke his neck? Yep. Exactly. So that's what I thought. That. So that yeah, that makes sense. That makes total fucking sense. Any other predictions? Uh, 
I mean, other than I, uh, I, I agree with uh, Kalika's uh, top three. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, think, I think those are top three. But with Marty, it's a wild card because I'm wanting to see how he how he does against Ningalvis this weekend. It's like depending on that match, that'll let me know whether he's going to stay or go. But I think it's just star power. I think his name's more star power because him, Will Ospreay, star power. He might actually get up there. He might get into, uh, like, you know, the finals. But, you know, close but no cigar, which has been his story since, like, uh, January, if I'm not mistaken. I can see him top eight. Maybe even top four. Like, semis. Yeah, top four is good. But uh, with this, uh, we have five new entries, three past winners, three that have been in the tournament in... And the last uh, three of these haven't been in the tournament in the last four years, uh, yeah, which so is an interesting just, stat. Yeah, it's just a mix of old and new. The ones that are new, just to get them the exposure, have a vet lead them along the way. And for the ones that are the former winners, make them look dominant. Um, so, I mean, New Japan's formula is simple, so they don't really, you know, yeah, it's it's unpredictable, but yet it's simple. And so, they have uh, three wrestlers from America, three from Mexico, three from England, one from Australia, and ten from Japan. And and that's just to make it look like, hey, look, we're making it diverse, so <laughs> it's not just all Japanese people. It's we, not, but we, we can, recruit wrestlers from around the world. Yeah. All things considering, I think they, they have a pretty good diverse field. You know, even yeah, though they're good, 10. Yeah, it's a pretty good mix of old and new. So, like the nostalgia for the Japanese fans. Uh, some star power for the American fans. And then to, and a good group of youth for the coming up, for the up-and-comers to look at. Uh, Dragon Lee Bandito, that, that gets your Latin crowd. So, I mean, yeah, yeah they got a good mix. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I've, if you haven't already noticed, we lost Mitch. He died during the podcast. Yeah. Rest in peace, he'll Mitch. Resur- he'll, he'll resurrect like the Undertaker. I thought he's the Undertaker of this. <laughs> Tell me a lie and say that Mitch won't go. He's going to get buried. See, I told you! What? <laughs> Mitch just da, came. Da, 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 da. For those who don't know, Mitch yes, actually came we back. We couldn't. We hear you. I can heal Mitch. <laughs> and we got Mitch back. No, he I, resurrected I, 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 from the I, I, dead. I, t- I know. And guess what? I'm on my I'm on my uh, computer now. So. Oh wow! Yay! <laughs> well, unfortunately for you, I figured it out. I went to the website instead of the app. So. Well, unfortunately hey, for you, we, we wrapped up the show. No, you did. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're still on, <laughs> and but uh, we're we're done. <laughs> yeah, we just got to the end. Yeah, just got yeah. yeah, we got you for the end. We and, got you just for the end. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys stalling. And I'm so sorry. This one, I'll make sure this doesn't happen next week because I'll have my computer ready. Well, let's right. hope so, Mitch. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad enough. Come on, get off my dick. Oh. Uh, and we go back to the dicks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> We're not on in that. I, I, I think I think that might be uh, appropriate time to. Uh... <laughs> yeah. We're not on yet. I don't think. Are we? No, nope, we're still on. That's yeah, good. we've been on, Mitch. Yeah, now we're oh. we eight already. Which I eat. My bad. Well, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. I, I or do we have another topic before we go? Nope, that's it. Well, we are, uh, we are getting wrapping up, getting out of here. For everybody, uh, please that watch this video, thank you. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment. Your comments are important to us. Yeah, this show was. I'm so sorry. I felt like th- this was horrible. I had a horrible show, a horrible pet situation. When in doubt, any- anyone. Yeah, blame me. Anyone who's listening, I-, I apologize greatly for the technical difficulties. Yeah, and we're gonna have you apologize next week too. 
<laughs> yeah. I yeah. shouldn't have said that. I just fed you up a song. It's his moment of apology. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> All right, uh, All right Calico, you are on Twitter. Please give out your Twitter. Okay, Twitter. I am Calico. Just hit me up, man. I always talk about wrestling and other stuff. So hey, I'm about wrestling, music, all this stuff. So we could get it. We could get it cracking, if you will. And Mitch Mayhem. And you can reach me at Mitch Mayhem X on Twitter. Wear your gas mask. At all times. And Scooter, do you have uh, Twitter too? Yes, you can find me at uh, Twitter at ScooterDust. Over 2,000 followers and growing every day. Come be a dust buster. I'm trying to get the Scooter level right there, boy. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> like but, he yeah, had it ready to go. You know, what the key, <laughs> but I, you know what the key is? Follow everybody as much as possible. Wait to see who follows <laughs> back, then unfollow. No, the key is... <laughs> The real key is uh, well, not monetize, like you? but get, get the people that you knew from your past, like if you did wrestling like me and Scott did, uh, stay in contact with them, shit like that. Yeah, that works. And I'm not on Twitter, but I am on Reddit. I'm JamesJ777. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Scooter for being on the show, our first ever guest. Thank you. It was a blast to uh, be here, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys will uh, have me back. Yeah, I was going to say, hopefully you can be a show regular, man. Uh, I know. This is our first show with all four of us together. So we're just yeah, I'm sorry out. that Mitch ruined the whole experience for, yeah, for you, Yeah, I, I did. Well, uh, if I may just say uh, one thing, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you will uh, hopefully be able to find uh, all three of these gentlemen uh, on the Dust Busted Money in the Bank podcast, the mm-hmm. live alternate commentary podcast for for the fa- for wrestlers for the fans by people who actually know what they are talking about. Not reading from a script, live action. This will be the first time we're gonna try a four man booth, and I am I am super excited for it. Money in the Bank on May eighteenth. I'm and gonna fight up. I'm ready. Yeah, that's gonna be dope. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and I'll make sure that uh, I'm there and I've taken my medicine, so I'm not so mentally stupid next time. Yeah. Or Take- we'll have the gong. <laughs> we'll have the gong ready, so when you oh, die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, trust me, when we do it through Discord, believe I'll have my soundboard ready to go. There you go. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that just for the simple fact that I don't have to record. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like I've said, I'm James J. As always, Calico Yachts, Mitch Mayhem, special guest, Scooter Dust. Uh, and not th- special guest, he's now part of the team, right? We'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll oh, okay. talk about it, Mitch. Right. I didn't talk to you guys about some. Like, don't, don't make decisions for me, damn it, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my show now. Is it, is it your show? <laughs> Yeah, but if we put, decide to put Scooter on, then we might have to get rid of you, Mitch. I'm just sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you can only do three. I don't blame you. At this uh, point, after tonight, I can't blame you. <laughs> okay, this has been Wrestling Wit Entertainment. Entertainment. Entertainment.